two, one, and we are live in the present tense with Sam Stewart on 91.7 FM, WNJR Washington, and online at WNJR.org. Welcome back to opening week on season seven of the present tense, everyone. On Tuesday, we had a great episode with WNJ Athletic Director Scott McGinnis, and we've got a great show lined up for you tonight as well. My first guest tonight returns to the show after joining season six of the present tense. Last year, this wide receiver was an all-region player and a two-time Rookie of the Month. Everyone, welcome back on the show tonight. John Paduzzi, JP, how are you doing tonight? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Excited to have you back. Yeah, and my you. second guest on the show tonight joined Season 5 of the Present Tense and returns to the studio tonight. This quarterback was an all pack honorable mention last year and a pay a seat Offensive Player of the Week. Everyone, welcome on the show tonight. Jake Pugh. Jake, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming back to the studio. I'm really excited to get to talk to both of you tonight. So let's go ahead and set the stage for everyone. President's football is just two days away. The President's will travel to Latrobe, PA, to take on PAC rival St. Vincent at 1 p.m., the season opener for your presence. Now, Jake, I'll go ahead and start with you. And, Jake, I'll give you a chance to comment on this in a sec. What do you believe the biggest keys are to taking home a victory week one against the Bearcats? Um, I think we need to just play the kind of football that we know we can play. Uh, we have a lot of returning players on both sides of the ball, and I'm really excited for what our offense can do this year. And uh, Saint, you know, St. Vincent's a good team. They have a lot of talented players that can make plays if you know if we're not sound. So I think we need to just play our brand of football and you know let our players play. Anything out of that, JP? Yeah, no. Our, our defense is awesome. I'm sure that they're going to hold them under under probably 21 points for sure. But um. As long as we score, do what we need to do, like he said, I'm sure we'll be fine. No, that's uh, – it's real exciting. It's going to be awesome to watch that defense. That's a great point as well. Um, and your offense that I felt like really came together at various points last year. And I know that um, both of you guys came on the show. You are talking about how the offense kind of developed as the year went along. And, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you, JP, that I'll start with you first this time. What was the main message from the coaches and – the staff as a whole in camp and in preseason. You know, you guys are coming off a two-loss season, uh, you know, very close to winning a pack championship. What's the message going into this year from the coaches? Uh, I think a big message was that, like, he was confident in us to be one of the best teams in the country this year because he thinks that the gap is closed and uh, he thinks that we can compete. And he said, like, he wouldn't – he's sure that, like, we can compete for a national championship this year. So – we're all expecting that. I'm pretty sure we all want to do that. But first, we got to – it's one and another every day. So, we got to win the pack, win the first game, and move on from there. Yeah, no, that's – that's. I, I feel the same kind of energy. I'm obviously not on the team. But from what I've talked to the guys about, everyone feels like this could be a big year for y'all. And, you know, Jake, I want to ask you, and once again, JP, I'll, I'll come back to you to answer this too because I feel like there could definitely be different perspectives on this. Is What are your opinions on camp? I know when Angelo came on here, he said he loved camp. It was his favorite time of year. Do you feel close to the team? When it's camp, when you're just here on campus by yourself and it's, you know, a lot of hard work and long, long days every day. Not that you guys don't work hard during the season, but I know, like, particularly during camp, it's particularly grueling on the body. Do you enjoy camp, Jake? I love camp. I think that, you know, you can look at it two different ways. You can, like, you know, just want to get through every day and be like, oh, this is terrible and it sucks. And then, or you can look at it with a positive mindset. And, you know, while it is, physically growing for some guys and you know, I have it pretty easy physically as a quarterback <laughs> I don't have to run 50 yards every play or bash my head against somebody like the lineman do up front but I mean it, I love football so I love camp and you know and then we're also best friends like that's one thing about this team that's I think is so awesome so like like you said we're basically here by ourselves for like the first 10 days so we have like 150 best friends just hanging out on the campus you know we haven't seen each other all summer long so it's like a big hang out to get together and we're all focused serious on football so we have a good time well that sounds that sounds like it sounds like a good time that's awesome yeah, and, and jp any thoughts on that yeah no i exactly what you said like we're all here by ourselves it's it's honestly a great time in the dorms you don't have to worry about any noise complaints or anything <laughs> we get right in our room we got we got our buddies right across the hall so the entire camp we kept our door open they kept theirs we just kind of yelled across the hall but um I think another thing is like the line at columns. It's just football players, so the line gets long, but there's no one else. It's only football players, so you don't have to wait too long. Nice. I mean, you guys do have a lot of people on the team, though, so you might have to wait long. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get there first. No, I, I yeah, I know in the football practice gets asked y'all for. I'm like, I gotta outwalk these guys from the base, <laughs> get back to the baseball field, so because they gonna be there in line a long time. Now, 
One thing that I, I wanted to talk about is, you know, you talked about you guys love football and you love the process in both your previous episodes. You know, Jeff, you had this great quote about how you want to raise that trip at the end of the year. And I, I can just really tell your dedication from that quote itself. But with that in mind, what is the biggest thing that y'all spent time working on this offseason? JP, I'll start with you. Uh, I think I think for me it was getting more, getting more like crisp route running. You want to really not round those off and keep them, keep them nice and sharp. Also, working on catching the ball more. I had a couple of drops last year I shouldn't have had, but um, I'm working on that pretty good. And then our connection, me and Pew, he came down this summer. It was a good time. We had to work out a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I think overall connection is a big thing. That's awesome. And, Jake, what would you say the biggest thing you worked on this offseason was? Um, so, I got to spend a little bit of time with my uncle up in Chicago and uh, mm-hmm watch some of the stuff that they do up there, like some of the quarterbacks, Justin Fields particularly. But, um, you know, I took a, a different approach to this season. Um, it might not mean much to non-football people or non-quarterbacks, but, like, uh, something as simple as switching my feet. Like, now I stand with my left mm-hmm. foot forward to start. And, like, so I focus mm-hmm. on, entirely on footwork this summer and how to, you know, keep my feet underneath me when I throw. Because I had a lot of throws last year where, like, I just missed by a little bit or, you know, came mm-hmm. out a little bit wrong because – when I look back at it, I had a real wide base or I was off bounds or something. So I, I took some notes and, you know, like really cued in on some of those, uh, some of those NFL guys do. And, you know, it's, I, I really do have a great privilege to be able to see that through my uncle. So I'm really fortunate to have that experience. But um, the, I'd say footwork for sure has been the biggest thing because when I have guys like JP outside, you know, a couple other guys, the great talented receivers, mm-hmm. you know, as long as you get the ball somewhat near them, they're going to make a play for you. Mm-hmm. So I just don't want to miss. That's pretty much it. And I know mm-hmm. if my footwork's clean, I'll get a near and make the play. Now, quick question off what you said there. You said left foot forward. Can you just explain for what the that means for the people at home and for me kind of? Yeah. When, when you say what, what situation you're talking about having your other foot forward in? So, like, typically – a right-handed quarterback will start in their stance with their right foot forward because your first step in your drop, you take your right step back. Okay. But what a lot of guys, the new thing is having your left foot forward so that if, you know, when you're running screens and that's such, you want to make quick throws. If you think about it in baseball terms, like when you're turning, like if you're turning a double play, you know, at second base, you have your left foot on the bag. Yeah. And the okay. shortstop flips it to you and you push back off your left and you throw it. Okay. So it's kind of like that. So now I have my left foot forward. So when I catch the snap, I push back off my left and I'm already ready to throw. Like I'm loaded with my weight on the right foot instead of having to step back, load my weight. So it's kind of like, and, and, and Mahomes does it a lot. Um, you know, Fields does it now. Obviously, I watched him do it, but it it's, gets you in a better spot if you're running things that are quick. Mm-hmm. And also, I just feel like I can control my tempo better when I do it. So um, typically, as a right handed quarterback, you'd see a, a right foot forward first, but now it's becoming a new thing in the NFL and college football. You watch guys like Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes, they all have their left foot forward first now. And it just, I don't know, I, I like it a lot. It set me up with a better tempo. So oh. I'm, I'm hoping that it works. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Part, part of the reason I love posting is just little details you just never know about and yeah. getting to talk to people. But that's super interesting. I'll have to watch it next time. Or even, you know, some NFL games. <laughs> yeah, just absolutely. watch that and watch maybe some old film with some other quarterbacks as well to that compare. That's, that's really interesting. Now, you know, to get a little bit deep off the bat already, you, y'all know I was going to ask some deep questions tonight, you know. When Coach Sirianni came on here on season um, four of the present tense, he actually apologized for having three losses to my uh, listeners on air. He said, I'm sorry, we had three losses this season. Mm-hmm. And I was t- telling that to Scott on Tuesday night, and he's like, wow, I, you know, that's three loss season, that's so great. You know, that's, you know, most people would just be, it's just coaches are cut from a different cloth. And, you know, I, I just know Coach Sirianni holds y'all to such a high standard. And I wanted to ask, what is it like, and you see his brother in the NFL with the same sort of fiery passion, what is it like having a coach who is so passionate and who holds you to such a high standard as a group and as individuals? And whoever take this first. Um, it's like, it's, well, first of all, it's, um, it's awesome. And I wouldn't want it any other way. You know, I had kind of a similar situation in high school as well too. So that's all I know. Um, but really, really, I mean, he just, he's so, detail oriented with things and like like you said he's so passionate about what he does and it you know as a football player you should never not be interested in what you're doing but if for one second you feel like your brain slips or you're not into it he's he knows right away because it means so much to him Mm -hmm. and he gets like you can't lose track of what you're trying to do and it's just almost like uh when you when you come in to play here 
there's no such thing as like a losing season. Like that's not even a possibility. Losing games, like we don't expect to lose a game. You know, mm -hmm. he's been saying a lot this year. You know, we have ten faceless opponents. Like it's about us, not about who we're playing. So like if we play for each other and not worry about who we're trying to beat, we just worry about playing for each other and playing as a team. Then we'll be way more successful. And whenever you whenever you watch someone like live out the words that they're saying in front of your face, it you know it makes you buy in and believe, and then you get amped up to play on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, JP, to take something that Jake said, kind of rephrase the question. What when he says you see him living now, how does Coach Sirianni, for better lack of a better term, kind of put his money where his mouth is and show through his actions what he's saying with his words? If that makes sense. Yeah, like I. I think a big thing is if if you don't like to be coached, then don't come here because he will coach you. He will he will make it he'll make it right, whatever's wrong. And um, sometimes sometimes it may piss you off, but you gotta love it. I love it. It's um it's something great. But um I I think it's an awesome experience to like be coached by him, hmm. and it's it's definitely something different. Okay, no, that's awesome, man. I know he gets, we're talking about, you know, his intensity, but I know he gets just as excited and celebrates just as much as you guys when you have a good yeah. celebration or a good play or um, obviously a great win. Like y'all had last year against Westminster, I heard you know, it was an exciting thing for him. Because that's one thing he talked about here. Obviously, I saw that in the weight room, the signs. Mm -hmm. with the, But, you know, I know you guys definitely aren't satisfied. and it, It's really exciting to see what you guys are going to do this year. And, you know, speaking of Coach Gianni, Jake, you were invited uh, to go with Coach Gianni to pack media day, sure. something that um, Tanner Will Patty went to the year before, and it's a big honor. So one question I want to ask you about, you know, there was a lot of interesting things that were said during that press conference, but Sirianni so basically compared you to some other players in Dub J recent history, and he said that when it's all said and done, you could be one of those names that's a legend at WJ. What is that feeling like when you heard that, to hear that from such a legend like Coach Sirianni? It, it makes you feel like, you know, people believe in you, and, you know, especially having a coach that believes in you makes you feel like, you know, I'm just going to go out and play my brand of football. And it takes it takes away some of the stress of, like, you know, in your in your head feeling like, oh, you know, am I doing good enough? Am I letting the team down? Am I, is there something I need to do better? Because as a quarterback, like, you have to lead the team in everything you do. Like, my actions on the field, my emotions, my energy, everyone follows just because of the nature of football, not because of anything that I do, not because I'm a, some great leader or anything. It's just – that's what football is. They follow the emotions of the quarterback. So to have a coach that believes in you, it makes it easy to go out and play because when you mess up, he's going to be, you know, if I throw an interception, he's going to be right. He's going to be the first one there chewing me out, you know, yelling at me, screaming at me. But that's the way it has to be because if he just, if he looks away from that, then it's becoming something that he's okay with. Mm. And, um, you know, to guys that he talked about, like Bobby Swallow, he threw two interceptions in a season. They played 13 games. Wow. So, like, those numbers don't ever be touched. The year before that, he threw three interceptions in 12 games. So, like, he threw – I think he threw five interceptions over, like, 30 games. Wow. And, you know, that's – I don't know the numbers on records for college football, but, I mean, I can't imagine that's, you know, any – that's got to be close to the top. And it's just – you know, it is really cool to have the, the faith behind you with, you know, your coach believing in you that much. And, you know, it just – it makes playing for him so much fun because you know you know you have support no matter what out there. He's gonna he's gonna back you up. And like you brought up his brother earlier, you know we see those videos on ESPN of him getting crazy and hyped up. Well, even you saw the video during the Super. They kind of got turned into a meme, but the video where he's crying during yeah. the national anthem, like and like I think people were just like, why, like, why is he crying? Because you can just see like the pat, like how much it means. Like, I mean, it, it, it's just I, I think we've all had moments in life where you just don't think something's gonna happen like you have rough days and then you go through those days the challenges and you get there and like you can tell that like, there have been hardships and struggles during that season for him and then you know just being able to be in that moment was well that was pretty cool to see for me I don't know cool. that was that was really cool because you can tell he's passionate about what he does yeah and you know JP another thing that was talked about during Jake's press conference was coach Garden and coach Krebs and you know Jake talked about how big of an influence they were on this offseason and you know, can you talk about the weight room a little bit? Because Jake said, you know, he was able to put on some size. A lot of guys have put on size. So what was it about Coach Garda's style that got so many people enthusiastic about the weight room? Yeah, no, immediately when he came in, he brought the energy. I loved it. Um, my, my old school I used to go to, we had a weight coach or weight training coach, and he was just like that. And Garda, I, I love it because he, he comes in, he gets us fired up, even the spring workouts. 
-hmm. it's like six in the morning like all of us are asleep and he's like come on guys you gotta wake it up he'll be clapping he'll be ready he'll be awake it's kind of i'm kind of like i don't know how he's awake right now. <laughs> <laughs> but he is but uh he's brought some amazing i i was actually up to 205 in the spring but over the summer sweat it all out working out so back down like 195 but um he does a great job i really love what he does and and uh, what you said with Coach Krebs, Coach Krebs has brought some to our offense that he's been working hard on the line and the offense in total. And uh, it's been working and doing good. So I think it will be all good. That's awesome. And, you know, perfect that you bought up the offense. Because I'm actually doing some research for it. So just, you know, the, the, the word run pass run got thrown around in the um, uh, press conference that you did with Coach Sirianni. And one thing that I actually looked up, so in 2016, um, I'm sorry, a 2009 revision of the NCAA rules redefined the illegal man downfield. So it used to just be one yard. Now, at all NCAA levels, it's three yards downfield. So one thing I was trying to read on Wikipedia was kind of about how that changed the game. You know, some coaches actually think Saban was kind of a critique of it because in the NFL, it's still just one yard. So yeah. with that rule change, and this is just a genuine question for me, and Jake or JP can take it, why that three-yard rule, how did that change things to make a run-pass option offense available in college football? Well, to start, it's so hard for the linemen. You know, when you line up and you call a play, and the linemen, in their minds, the linemen think it's a run. Like, they don't even know, like, I'd say probably 75% of the time, they don't even know that a pass is an option. So they, so on a run-pass option play, they pretty much always think it's run. Yeah, and that's at all levels. Like, you know, don't the linemen will get part of the play, the receivers will get part of the play, quarterback will get all of it, obviously, but linemen on 75% of plays in football don't know that there's even a pass option. So really? for them to have to run, they, don't need to. They, go, oh, okay. they go full speed, they're trying to do their duty blocking, and then to have to stop a yard downfield when the quarterback pulls it and is throwing it. Now there's obviously a lot of plays where they know, you know, hey, like be alert here, block your guy. If he starts moving, then let him go, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. But having that three yard window gives you a little bit of like a, a grace area. And I think that it, you know, I think that was a great change because honestly, like even if you're pass blocking, sometimes, you know, just depending on a twist or whatever happens, you might end up a yard down the field. So having that little wiggle room to be able to execute your run block and then realize, okay, we're not running the ball. But let me get back a yard or so. But um, I mean, it's still tough for linemen. So at our level, I can see why they didn't change it in the NFL because those guys are different. I mean, they're just so. So different. what what do you think would happen if the NFL linemen could get out three yards? Do you think it would be unfair? I think yeah. it would. Yeah. Like <laughs> if you give if you give the Kansas City Chiefs three yards to go downfield and Patrick Mahomes that much time to decide, hey, am I going to hand it off or am I going to pull it? Like there's no possible way to stop them because now if they're going that full speed for three yards now that makes their running offense so much better okay and then if they can get going that far now teams have to come up and guard the run and then he pulls it and now he's throwing the ball mm -hmm. like there's guys like that patrick mahone like there's no way you could it's just it's not, yeah it's too good okay. it's not possible now now jp as a receiver you have your out before the play on an rpo right yeah it's but you might have to block it's yes it's it's so for us it's all it's all in one so if if it's not in the play call, then we're blocking. But like, if there is a, a route in the play call, then there's a possibility of the run. But if I have the route, then I got to run the route, okay. and then I run him off until I notice that he ran, and then I'll start blocking. Okay, interesting. Now, one thing, last question on this particular subject is that the term "run pass run" is that different from "run pass"? Like Sirianni used that in the press conference, and he said the Eagles do a similar thing. He made a joke about the Eagles took it from us instead of we took it from the Eagles, but What's that distinction put uh, for people who maybe have heard the term run pass option from run pass run? Is there a difference there? Yeah, for sure. So like you can look at run pass options two different ways. It could be a straight up, hey, we're going to call two plays at once. We're going to call a run play and we're going to call a pass play. Okay. And then whenever you line up at the ball, you're going <laughs> to dictate right at the snap. Okay, I'm either handing it off or I'm throwing it. Okay. And not even like, not even a run fake involved. It's just throwing it. Or an RPO run pass option could be where you execute a run fake and either hand it off or on the move throw uh, the ball uh, okay. so where he gets the run pass run term is we have a couple of plays where he wants me to either run hand it off to our running backs so that's part of the run and then if i don't i'm pulling it i'm looking for a pass to these guys downfield and it turns into instead of just the run or the pass it's the run or the pass or i run 
So that's oh, where okay. and Jalen Hurts does it a lot. So he says that uh, the Eagles stole it from us. So I'm gonna I'm gonna back him up on that. I'm gonna say Jalen, Jalen Hurts stole it from us. So. <laughs> well, you heard it here on Radio First, folks. So so I think a lot of people would probably say that so there's not necessarily there doesn't have to be a fake and a run pass option. Not necessarily. It could just be you know like typical teams. I you know I'm just using generic football terms. A coach could call, hey, we're gonna run. We're gonna run dive and we're gonna run a corner route. Mm-hmm. And so you can just call dive corner. And so when you line up at the ball, you can be like, oh, okay, my receiver's one on one. I'm gonna throw the corner. So at the line, he tells the lineman, hey, I'm gonna throw the ball, and then he just throws it. Or you could be like, oh, they're put thirty guys over talking my receiver, so I just want to run the ball, and he hands off the dive to the running back. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a read bid play. It could just be like, a, oh, I don't like that pass, so now I'm just yeah. gonna turn around and hand it off. Interesting. Okay. Thanks for explaining that. That's that's really cool. Thank you for uh, kind of giving us some insight and some football knowledge there. Now. Um, on that trip where y'all were hanging out, what did y'all do besides play uh, some football, toss the pinks here a little bit? I heard you did some golf. What, what other kind of activities did you get up to? JP, you're laughing, so I'll go to you first. Oh, uh, you're talking about the hill net one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, well, let's see. He got there, got him from the airport, picked up some Zaxby's. Have you had Zaxby's before? That was my first time. What'd you get? Uh, I got a chicken sandwich. Uh, he got the uh, number five. King okay, so yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you know like the big Zach snack pack, the yeah, wings and yeah. tings meal. That, that's oh, that's what I, I got. I got the wings. I got the the wings and tings. Yeah. I, well, I don't know what it was. I, I, got, <laughs> I, got, I got boneless wings yeah. and like a chicken sandwich, or maybe just chicken strips. Nah, the boneless boneless wings is axe piece. Yeah. The, my go-to is the kick and chicken. That's that's, that's Zach sauce, go-to. man. I, if I, I could go anywhere in the entire world, it'd be. Zaxby's number five. Zaxby's. It's 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 a good choice. I mean, I y'all y'all Bojangles in South Carolina, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I'm, Bojangles too. Bojangles is good. So if you want to know, I mean, obviously cookout as well. Do you have some cookout there? I yeah, I, we didn't there, but I've had it plenty of times in my life, and I love cookout too. But that's good. That's yeah, that good. was the first time I had Zaxby's, and we, actually when he picked me up from the airport, he was like, "Hey." um, do you want to golf? Like, we don't really have anything else to do. He's like, my buddy just called. And I was like, yeah, let's go golf. He's like, "Where well, are you hungry? Because Zaxby's is right there. I found with Zaxby's. I was like, yeah, let's go. So we got Zaxby's and we went golf. And then we were planning on golfing the next day at Harbor Town. Then we ended up not being able to go Thursday. So then we golfed somewhere else Thursday. And then Friday we golfed Harbor Town. How would you like Harbor Town? That's a beautiful town. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's Sea Pines is pretty sweet. But the yeah. uh, town that it's in, um, he gets to see it all the time, I'm sure. But... Uh, it's really cool to see that kind of world, and you know, when you go to Harbor Town, it's pretty cool to see like to be on a place, you know, that you, you've seen on TV, and it looks totally different without the grandstands. I got to play Whistling Straits as well this summer with my uncle, so I saw that too. Oh, that's cool. But um, it's it's beautiful, and like you know, we're the guy we were playing with that JP's friends with. It's the caddy there. He's you know, he said holes one through twelve, like they're they're tough, they're hard <coughs> holes, and you know, they're just typical. North South Carolina golf. He's like, but then when you hit hole thirteen through eighteen, he's like, that that's why people pay to come here. And, and you could tell, like, as soon as you get to hole thirteen, you're like, oh wow, like it's a total change of scenery. That's awesome. The, it's just so beautiful. You can see the red and white lighthouse from the course, right? Yeah, eighteen, from seventeen, seventeen. And 18. That's yeah. really cool. I, I loved. I mean, I'm not a golfer, but I love just going like there, shopping with my parents and stuff, going up to the lighthouse. It was. It's always really cool. Um, sea pines, and we, we went to Palmetto Dunes when we used to yeah, go. Palmetto, Palmetto Dunes is another. Yeah. It's, those are like the two like big places. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. Do you go kayaking at all during the summer or anything like that? Paddle boarding? I, I mean, I don't. That's more. That's a that's a workout. I'm not big into that. I go jet ski. I do jet skis. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> so you, some of us don't have money for a jet ski. You know. I, I work on jet skis. I don't got one. Oh, yeah. you work on? I did not know that. Yeah. When did that start? Uh, this summer. Really? Yeah. So were you like a mechanic on them? Or? No, no, I just, I was a tour guide. Took them out. What? Yeah. What a sweet gig, I dude. <laughs> That's awesome. I was, I was trying to work as a, I uh, didn't know a but I, I love paddle boarding. So okay. yeah, you know, stand up on the board. Going to the I, I can do that through like the marsh and like the creeks and stuff. Yeah, but see, South Carolina, you got to be careful because in North Carolina, we, they always say there's gators in North Carolina marshes, but I don't know. But yeah. South Carolina, there's definitely like, I've been kayaking down there before. It's, oh, yeah. Do you see any, Jake? We saw a dinosaur on the golf course. I, I got to got show you this video. Really? It was, oh, <laughs> this thing had to be 10 feet long, and he's driving up right next to it. And I'm like sitting in the car, like, and he's like, I'm like, dude, get away, get away. Like, dude, get away. Like, we're getting too close. He's like, why? We're, he's like, it won't do anything. I'm like, get away. And I'm like, you guys must see these all the time because this thing was like 10 feet long and i'm like dude get away we kept getting closer but it was it was, it was a big cool boy. 
That's crazy. Yeah, Hilton. I mean, I, like I said, we I live near the beach. We don't. It's that. To me, it's just crazy. It's like uh, people have dogs. You can't walk your dog near the water and stuff. That's yeah. There's some dinosaurs down there. It really is. That's actually crazy. You said. I don't know if you heard. Did Did you hear about the lady that got? She got eaten in Hilton Head. Really? July Fourth. Really? Not my, my best friend's backyard. What? It was crazy. That's that's scary. I, you know, that's I, scary. I'll, I'll tell you what. I saw when we were at. You used to go ride on the golf course in uh, Palmetto Dunes, and this guy in the summer like looking for alligators. Like they're just like peering through. Oh, you know, it's right there. And we're gonna yell anything out because we don't really, like you know have them run. So they walked away. And the alligators right there. Watched them. It's just it's crazy. Alligators. Yeah, I, I don't know. To me, they're more scary. Like obviously sharks are out in the ocean. I'm out in the ocean. A lot of people were like, Boy, "Did you see sharks in Australia?" I didn't see any sharks in Australia. Really? Not really? one shark. Wow. Nope. Now I don't know, JP. Do you see sharks in South Carolina? In North Carolina, we have a ton of sharks. I mean, yeah, like, little nurse sharks all yeah. the time. Well, yeah, we do. Yeah, we. I got people in the jet skis. They're like, "Is there anything out there?" And I'm like, "No." Like they're like, "What lives there?" I'm like, "Everything." Is the water salty? Is yeah. it? <laughs> everything lives. Well, the thing is about the, the sharks. They're really majestic creatures, and we've killed millions of sharks as human beings. From what we've done. they've killed probably like hundred to two hundred in the last ten. I don't know, last hundred years probably, you know, in, in the uh, United States. I mean, in other countries, that, you know, like South Africa, and obviously, um, in World War II, there were some shipwrecks where yeah. sharks were drawn to the, um, the battle. But it was like, you know, just, just being there in Australia, I was like, I'm just looking for shark constantly. And the water was clear. Is it? We're talking about that, yeah, it's clear. So I'm like, That's awesome. looking around. It, it's awesome, but it also like, is a little freaky. Because you're like, coming down a wave, and you can just like, see the bottom see the uh the fish in there but no nah, it's it's really cool to be able to have that um clear water we got that on the east coast a little bit we're talking about that today at lunch so just another question, the jet skis where do you take people around just like out to the ocean or in the marsh or what yeah, it's no out in the, we'll take them out in the sound so okay there's a marina i don't know you know broad creek have you ever no i i don't know the uh, geography too well okay yeah there's it's a, so it's a creek it's like a no wig zone for like 10 minutes from where our marina is we just take them out there and then uh, take them to this big, big area. We put them from one dock, one house, the starting house in Spanish Wells to like a dock way on the other end. So they have like a total of maybe 800 yards, maybe even more actually, I could be wrong on that, but 800 yards long and then probably a solid 600 yards wide to do whatever. Wow, that's really that's really cool, dude. What a, what a sick gig, bro. He's, yeah. he's living a struggle down there, man. <laughs> dude, that's that's really cool. So did you take Dick out of the jet ski? No, we, we didn't get to that. We didn't get out on the water. Yeah. Uh, we, we did a lot of golf. A lot of golf. So I don't even think, did you get to the beach? No, we didn't. Yeah. We didn't what? get to the beach. It was so hot. It was hot enough just where we were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it we, felt we're, like 112 degrees. Another thing in South Carolina and even North Carolina in the deep summer, I always call it the deep summer, like that late July, August That's period. Really when I was there. It's, yeah. The water's hot, too. Yeah. I, I don't. Actually, it wasn't that bad this year. It didn't, it really? didn't get to the. South Carolina's like baffle. I hate that. It rained a lot. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, because, dude, that. When. I like, actually got cold summer, got prickly heat wraps just from the water being so hot yeah. down there. But, no, nah, the, the East Coast beaches, I think a lot of people sleep on them, but I, I love it. And there's a whole different, like, surfing side of things, too. But, no, nah, I, I, I do appreciate the South Carolina and those kind of beaches. Um, yeah, it's, it's always a good time down there. And, you know, couple questions I want to get to. I wanted to, you know, you guys talked about the difficulties and your favorite part about playing your position. You know, JP had a thing about, you know, quarterbacks and receivers both have to know the plays. That's a very difficult thing to know where everyone is going on every play. That was an interesting kind of uh, point you made last show. So I want to do something I haven't done before. JP, I'll, I'll start with you, then I'll go to Jake. So JP, what kind of qualities does a good quarterback have? What kind of quarterback do you want to play for? Uh, definitely one that can scramble. Uh, he can get out of the pocket, <laughs> and then who can want to sling it? Knows knows everything about football more than more than I do, <laughs> which he does. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, fast fast runner, good eyes, seeing when people are open, seeing when people aren't. It's a I think that's pretty good. Yeah, Seeing when you're open, right? Especially yeah, when you're yeah, open. There you go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And Jake said, hey, you're always open. You throw it up there. Yeah. Give him a chance. And Jake, what kind of qualities do you look for in your wide receivers? What qualities make you really enjoy working with a wide receiver? Um, you know, someone that's like 
timing timing that you get down with so like mm-hmm. you know like we have really we worked on it a lot and um, someone that you can know where they're going to be and like when they're going to be there so like i don't even have to watch him run a curl i could be looking the other way but i know in my head i have a clock in my head and i'm like if i'm looking the other way and i'm thinking okay i'm going to look at something over here but i know he's running a curl there i could like clicks in my head I'm like all right I know he's gonna be there and when I turn and I can see okay he's actually there and he, you know mm-hmm. and someone so someone that's on time someone that can get open someone that's got good hands and you know like I said before someone that you don't have to be perfect with their pass you just put the ball in the area and they can go get it and that you know that's what makes you know JP and a couple of our other guys so much fun to throw to because you know I as a quarterback it's kind of it hurts you a little bit when you have to stare down the route because then, you know, the defense will be where you're going. So if I have to stare at the receiver to make sure he's getting open, to make sure he's on time, you know, when I can look mm. look away, you know, do whatever, and then come back to him and be like, I know he's going to be open. I don't have to worry about it. I saw it's going to be man, so I'm like, there's no way that kid can cover him. And I know he's getting open. I know when he's going to get there. And it's like, now I can execute the play and then come back and be like, hey, my guy's wide open. So, you know, it makes my life easier because then, it takes the stress of away from me of you know having to force something into a tight window or you know make some magic happen. I could just stay back there, wait for huh. you know watch them get open and get them the ball. Interesting. Now one now one term you said there was chemistry. You mentioned a couple times already. So do you like instantly know if you have chemistry with a receiver? Does it take time to develop? Like how does that sort of form? Did you and JP have it right away? Because obviously y'all were a good team last year. JP, you, you threw to him a lot. So what kind of things can you do to build chemistry if? That's the thing you do. Is it a thing that needs to be built, or is it just come right away? Um, it it happens both ways, honestly. I'm sure it comes right away for a lot of people, but you definitely need to work on it and, and sharpen it up. But like things that work for us too, like I know a lot of the moves that he likes to do on his routes. You know, if the guy's inside of him, if the guy's outside of him, how he has to get open. So that's like that's what I feel is the biggest part of the chemistry. Like I know, okay, he, okay, we're running a ten and in, so he's gonna. Uh, he's gonna stutter, make this guy miss. You know, go mm. act like he's going out, then come back in, and things like that, where you can kind of anticipate the moves he's gonna make to get open, and not just okay, he's gonna run in a straight line this way, and then run in a straight line that way, and hope he's open. It's like okay. the chemistry, and then like you know, we throw routes on air all the time. We work together. We'll stay after you know, throw some balls at each other or whatever. But you know, just just having the faith. And like the other biggest thing is with chemistry is just believing that your guy can do it. Because if you don't believe he can get open, then you know, even if the play call goes to him in your mind, you're like, ah, I'm not going that way because I know he can get open. So you got to believe in him. And, you know, obviously, we made a, a good living last year. We're going to hopefully do it again yeah. this year. So, JP, when Jake was saying, like, you change up your route a little bit on each different play, is that, like, do you have a different set of moves depending on the, where the defender's playing? Or is it more just kind of like, I don't know, like, can you just talk about that process a little bit? Like, the kind of creativity you get on every play is like, you still stay within the route, right? But just it's like a little move or something you do? Yeah, yeah. So it, it I feel like it all starts on based off where your DB's lined up on you. So it okay. could be inside press, outside press, or then five yards off you, inside you, or right up on you, or outside you. So it kind of in your head when you get to the line, you know what you're going to do. So like if he was off me, I kind of wouldn't do anything at the line. I would get on his toes, kind of do a secondary, or I guess it'd be a primary release. Okay. And try to make him miss some way before I make my actual cut to where I'm going. Mm-hmm. And then like on the line, you, you know, you watch like all these videos of like other receivers, like NFL players, stuff on digs, like yeah. all them. And you kind of learn stuff from them. You can't do it as good as they can, but. I've seen Des Bryant do those videos where it's like the step behind. It's like, wow, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's actually, I actually like that one. That's, that's part of, probably my go-to, but. Okay. Yeah, but um, stuff like that and you got to make sure you stay, like you said, within the route okay. and uh, get where you need to be. Okay, I got gotcha. you. No, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that football knowledge. I, I think the viewers at home will really uh, appreciate that. And I, I certainly learned a lot. And Now, you know, a couple of deep questions. Maybe it's just a senior, but I, I feel like I should ask Scott these questions. And I, I asked some of the people in my documentary a similar question about the sport of surfing. But, you know, I, I would like to ask you all questions a little bit on the deeper side. And this is my first question of that variety tonight. Why do you think people are drawn to sports? Okay, you go first. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I can give you a, I can give you a little context. I, did you guys come to the award ceremony last year? Yeah. For the prize yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I don't that, know. I was, yeah, that, that kind of portion where I talked about why are people drawn to stories in sports? Because yeah. like, 
people aren't excited about, I mean, you know, there's some movies that are all, but for the most part, movies, TV, books, people don't get as hype, don't go out at 6 a.m. and then go to a stadium for four hours to go watch a movie, you know what I mean? It's like, sports are the best stories we have and that draw people so much to them so often. It's like, why are people drawn to sports? I I think a big thing is the feeling of success mm -hmm. and winning. So like, you, there's like that, that feeling, that adrenaline, when you go out there, you do what you did right, you do what you did and you won. And I think just like that winning feeling, I think people are addicted to it. I think it's something that you can get addicted to. And mm. I know, I know I'm addicted to it. I love winning. I'm pretty sure Pew is. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a big thing. And then just, I think another thing is whether it's a brotherhood or a sisterhood, whatever sports team you're on, it's just like that, that connection you have with everyone else around you or that team. And, um, I think it's just like an important thing to people that they get like socially connected to and mm -hmm. mentally and then it's something you don't want to leave when like you have to hang it up at some point and you know like all these people all the adults and parents will tell you like I what I would do to play like one more down or mm -hmm. one more play or something like that but it's it's definitely all all of those and uh, I, I think it's something you get emotionally connected to mm -hmm. Wow that's a great answer Jake, what do you have for us on this topic? I think sports just gives a lot of people a, a second feeling of family, mm -hmm. whether you actually play the sport or not. Like, I know a lot of fans, I mean, how, it's so impressive that, you know, people can buy into something that they're not even really a part of. That no one on that thing knows who they are. Yeah, like, you know, you're just, uh, like, as a fan, you know, I, my probably my favorite team is North Carolina basketball. We've talked about it many times <laughs> as you're a Duke fan, but, like, I don't know anything that they do during the season. Like, I don't know what practice looks like. I don't know what they eat. I don't know how, you know, what Coach Davis likes to do. I don't know. Not what, playing that IT, that's for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, But, like, but I still, love, like, I'm, I'm, like JP said, I, I've become addicted to not only myself winning in sports, but to them winning in sports. Mm -hmm. And, like, it means so much to me when they lose. And my dad and my family, they always yell at me when I get upset when they lose. And I'm like, but it, and, it, and coming from sports, you you know you get that feeling of how you know what it means and how hard it is to win because winning is not easy. Like there's like you were talking about earlier with Coach Iriani apologized for three losses two years ago. Like some people would do anything to have a three loss season. Like I know there's a lot of coaches and a lot of sports out there that I've never had a winning season, whether it's their fault or not. They would give anything. Yeah. You know they'd give up the next twenty years of coaching and the previous twenty years of coaching just to go eight and three. And then for some people, they're eight and three and they're like, well, that was a waste. Like, why did we even play this year? And, you know, winning is so hard that I feel like once you once you get into the sport or once you watch a sport, it's like that, like I said, it's that second sense of family where it's like, I want to do everything I can for my family. Or if you're not on the team, actually, it's, you know, you appreciate that everything that the team does to put into it when you're just watching from an outside mm -hmm. perspective, you appreciate it so much that it's like you feel like you're a part of them. And whenever they lose, you feel like you've lost and a piece of you breaks. So it's cool for me to see from both sides, you know, actually playing and then getting to be a fan for other sports too. So, I mean, like, I, I just really think that sports, it's, that's a great question because there's so, many, so many ways you can go about it to answer it. But I think sports brings family, you know, and, you know, for a lot of kids, who might not have the greatest life growing up with family. You know, maybe it is mm. their only family. And I would say that probably half of college sports and professional sports or even sports at the younger level is made up of kids that don't have the greatest family life at home. Mm. And it just gives them a chance to get away, do something they had for fun and connect with, you know, their best friends and just forget about the outside world and just play, just have fun. Mm. And, you know, wow. and that, that's the beauty of it, I think. That's a great answer. Now, a couple things I think that really made me think of your answer, Jake and JP. For one, I think, you're talking about family, both of you guys kind of talk about family and brotherhood or sisterhood, and I think that one thing that I was watching, you know, kind of a total crazy story, this, this Bishop Sycamore documentary came out on HBO, really great, great. But Monty Jones, one of my favorite um, sports pundits, he was talking in there, and it's like, what he said is, think about all the jobs inside, like firefighters, policemen, teachers, like, all these different jobs. What two titles do we keep? We keep, if you get a doctor, it would call you, not Mr. or Mrs., we call you doctor. Mm -hmm. And then coach. Mm -hmm. 
when you see Coach Sirianni, you don't just go, hey, uh, Mike, or hey, Coach, or, see, I can't even not say it. Like, yeah. when someone's a coach, they're a coach to you forever. Like, I'll probably be, like, it, it'd be weird for me to go back five years from now and say, hey, what's up, Jeff? Like, I'm going to yeah. call Coach Mountain, you know what I mean? So, like, those that, if you think about it, those are probably the two biggest titles that stick in terms of incorporating with a personality in society, doctor and coach. And two, like, Jake, what you said, you know, there's another documentary I watched this summer. It's a little, they didn't do a great job with the marketing. I feel like not a lot of people have seen it, but the Steph Curry documentary about his time at Davidson and obviously the two-year lull that they had um, before they won the Celtics championship. And I remember I, I cried, my mom cried after it because, you know, they had been down for two years and then Steph started crying on the court. And it's like, you know, we don't know Steph and Curry. We don't really know his family. We know who his family is, but just seeing like and knowing that you know we all go through struggles in life and seeing him bounce back from that we we're just talking about the other day about what's coming it's about michael jordan about come him coming back after his father dad's winning the championship on father's day so many examples throughout sports and i think sports kind of inspire us and we can see ourselves and our favorite athletes that way and even though we never meet them we can relate to them because they're human you know what i mean yeah absolutely so and i think that's the important part is to remember they're human like there's a lot of people right now who yell at players and that's a big problem in the NBA you know obviously in football we've seen some incidents over the years people have like been trash talking players it's like you know that person's a human too and I think for those that were Christian sports we appreciate that you know sometimes the players favorite players do fail like no one's perfect LeBron Absolutely. Jordan yeah. missed shots you know Tom Brady missed throws same thing with Patrick Mahomes he lost the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl so yeah. I think that's a big part of sports so thank you for those answers great conversation this is a question I think I'm gonna really enjoy talking to people about I think it's it's you know sports obviously you guys have a couple more years to play I got one more of organized sports, but I, you know, I know I'll still be around sports in some capacity, watching, maybe joining like even like just a, a, a rec league or something for basketball, just, you know, and how much sports are tied up in our lives. And it's an interesting conversation. And with that said, have sports changed you as a person? <laughs> um, absolutely. They definitely have uh, from something as simple as being a leader. Uh, and everything I do in life, you know, sports has taught me everything I know about that and getting to watch teams that my dad has coached and players that he's coached and, you know, uncles and whatever it may be, aunts, my mom coached softball. Like I've just grown up around sports. So it has changed my life and it has also been my life and I'm really appreciative for that. But, you know, just being a leader and then also having something to do and you know getting to hang out with my best friends all the time and you know sports giving me best friends because you know we we say all the time like i don't know if i could go to a, a big school or just college in general and not play a sport like i don't know if i could wake up in the morning go to class come home from class and then not have a sport to be mm. you know like set me straight say hey you have to do this at this time or you have yeah and then you have to use that structure and i think yeah. that's what you're saying for people maybe come from a less fortunate situation or that yeah. don't have the family support like sports gives you that structure, which I believe, you know, and this is a whole philosophical, is it very important to a human, a successful human Absolutely. life is having structure. Well, wow. uh, that's, that's really, a, that's a, that's a really great thing. I didn't even think about the structure that sports gives people. And you know, even if you don't come from an area where you need structure, even if structure at home, it gives you even more and teaches you how to be disciplined in different ways. So I think that's a great answer. And JP, what would you say about this? How has sports changed you? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where I would be without sports really couldn't tell you if I didn't play sports I couldn't 100% guarantee I'd be in college just well because with your dad and your sister uh, is, your sister plays what sport again remind me oh uh, she plays volleyball at UNC Pembroke okay that's awesome and yeah. you said your dad coach obviously was a big influence yeah. coaching you throughout your life so I mean for you I'm sure it's hard to see you know Jake and me as well like would our even relationship with our family would be like if we didn't play sports like yeah. it would be different I'm not saying it would be bad but and I feel like sports just brings families together now. but go ahead what were you saying yeah I mean it's just considering the fact that I grew up like I was born there's pictures of me like on the football field as my dad's coach and his team he's rolling me around in a stroller and <laughs> awesome. all, the, all the dudes are there but um yeah I mean it's it definitely has changed me like he said being like a leader and and like being a part of like this group of dudes it's just awesome and uh I don't know what I would do without it but yeah now I think one thing you mentioned you both mentioned that was really interesting, the, the term of leader. I think it gets thrown around as such like an umbrella term sometimes. And one thing I've tried to, to think about is like, you know, we obviously in all our sports have captains. We have the best players, you know, and I think for anyone who's out there listening to this or will listen on YouTube, like if you're a freshman, if, if you're a person who doesn't play very much, 
a leader is one person who is a person who has one follower. By definition, if you have one follower, you are a leader, and that's in any place in life. So if you have influence over one person, maybe it's another person in your class, maybe it's a person who's younger than you, you have to take that opportunity to be the best leader you can. Because I think sometimes, like we always talk about leadership, it's like, okay, there's there's one leader and a bunch of followers. Like to me, I think the best teams have a bunch of leaders, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like it, there's this like broad term, I don't know if pejorative would be the right term, but like, it's like leadership just means one person. But I think at the end of the day, if everyone on your team is a leader and everyone is holding each other accountable, I think that's when you need the special teams, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think that separates good teams from being great. It sounds like y'all got that this year. I mean, I just, Angelo told me about some of the team chemistry. You know, he felt had changed over these past few years. I don't yeah, know if y'all had sensed that at all. Yeah, it's absolutely. to become more of a family, you know, a little bit tighter, including everyone. If yeah. that, I don't know if y'all felt that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I haven't been here as long as him. He's like 35 years old. <laughs> well, he's like, I saw, you know, it's funny. I saw Drew in the cafeteria. I go, mean, dude, they let you play one more year, bro. You're going to your second doctor right now. But <laughs> no, I was good to see Drew. I know he's helping out this yeah. fall some. So. But something as simple as that, like, you know, a guy like Drew coming back, he had a, a rough beginning of college, bounced around, there was a couple different schools, you know, not really able to find a place. And then he comes here is an outstanding player and then you know as he's still training to try and play at a higher level he's like willing to coach and give back to us mm -hmm. the players and it, it, at first it's weird because it's like hey like i was just you know <laughs> going all out he was just going all out yeah i'm sure he was, he was trying to let you up in practice I'm yeah sure. like you know we were just battling every single day and now it's like he's a coach and he's not directly my position coach but um, it's you know it's just cool to see that and like you said being a leader of one at least one person you know I know he's a great leader oh yeah he's gonna do a great job and he can just show young guys like you know hey this is what you got to do to buy, buy in you know and just and, and he's a he's a great leader so it's cool to see people coming back yeah. like that and you know Coach Gardner Coach Krebs Coach Tyler Kerrigan you know that he came back as well he just okay. played last year okay um, cool. so. It, it, Sirianni talks about it all the time. We have, I think it's like eight guys on our staff that play WJ football. Oh, wow. So it, it's a real, really connected place. And you know, it shows how much it means to be from here that people want to come back. That's awesome. Yeah, Drew, Drew, I had Drew and AK on the show last year. And Drew is such a smart guy. And so is AK, you know, it was just, it was like hearing those, like, oh, like I know they really set like a good culture place. And it's funny because AK, I was like, you know, what did you do this summer? And he's like, I did this internship. And I actually had a, 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 a paper published in a medical journal. And I go, you want to explain it? And he goes like, yeah, we, we, I, I, I'm not gonna try to explain it because I'm gonna sound dumb. Something with people's spines and putting a chip in or something. And then he was just like, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm like, wow, just one smart dude right there. That's great. And it'll take your head off if you're a quarterback too. Yeah. So now that's awesome. I'm really excited to see you know what they kind of build on defense because y'all got some dogs on that defensive line and They're really good. the whole squad, you know, and obviously offense as well. So. We're actually going to take a break right now, but we'll come back and talk about Italy and a little NFL before we wrap up. But, you know, it's trivia time here on the present tense. So I got a couple of history questions for us tonight. I was feeling, you know, JP's a political science major. And uh, some, of, some of your uh, uh, locations that you've grown up kind of inspire these questions. So you know how it works. I ask you the questions before the break. You have about three and a half minutes while I listen to some Mike Posner. When we come back, you'll answer the questions and see if you get them correct. So the first question tonight is, what city did the first battle of the Civil War take place in? And the second question is, what famous document did Thomas Jefferson, which uh, Jake's High School was named after, Absolutely. what famous American document did he write? We'll get your answers after the break. You're listening to 91.7 FM at WNJ Washington and online at WNJR.org. One history man, I have no clue. He should know one of these. I know. I, my only guess would be Gettysburg. It's not Gettysburg. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the one that ended. Civil War. It was somewhere in Virginia. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in Virginia. No. Uh, yeah, I'll give you a hint. It's I picked it because it's your home state. It's in South Carolina. Oh, jeez. Yeah, then I'm out. Charleston was that part of it? I think you're. It's it's a fort. Um, fort Henry Fort. Um, I just asked for the city. Oh, the city. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for a name. I just asked for the city. And then the second question. Thomas Jefferson. What did he sign? Huh? Or what did, what did he, he write? write? What did he write? Did he, did he not write the Declaration of Independence? I mean, he was probably a kill author. 
George Washington was the first one. TJ was what? Are you sure? Three. We're gonna sound like idiots here. I know. <laughs> I could have tossed out two softballs in that line because they both relate to like your life experience. <laughs> what does sports mean to you? It means everything. I don't know any answer in this most sports. <laughs> I didn't know about Cam Newton. The one last year. That's what sports mean to us. Sports it's funny we play trivia crack. Our 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 sports is like Ninety eight percent and everything else. Really? Like, yeah. So I play I play trivial pursuit with my mom and my girlfriend a lot. So I just like the general yeah. trivia stuff. So some I used to just do sports, and then there's only so many sports questions you can ask for every sport. And like, because I could ask y'all something like really just, I'm like, yeah, yeah, this might be fun for the audience. Like, I like where the audience can like think about it. Like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? That's when people appreciate. Like, oh, like, like people text me like, oh, this is the answer. This is the answer. Yeah. No, I don't. Well, he's a poli sci major, so I thought he would get the one. <laughs> well, I should I should know what he wrote actually. Boob was gonna move my gun. That's a lot of fun. Let's see, what did he write? He didn't write the Federalist Papers. That was Alexander Hamilton. Yeah. Great musical. You guys seen it? I'm not. Are you talking about like the movie? No, the play. Well, the, it, yeah, they, they made the movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually just, got to see it at the Kennedy Center in DC. Really? Yeah, that was really cool. That's got to be like the main one that they really geared up for, I bet. Yeah, I, I don't really like musicals, but I just like the history. I'm a big yeah. American history, yeah. What do you think he wrote? Yeah, 45 seconds. I mean, I know he wrote, he was part of writing the Declaration, but that's not probably, that's not the answer we're looking for. What's like the articles? Like, articles of Confederation. What's the. Like, what is the amendments? Yeah, amendments. You read the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't even know the Fifth Amendment. I might do it. Are we both answering both of them? Sorry. Are we both answering both of them? Uh, you guys can work together. Or a team. Yeah. Okay. Or you can go separate. Some of them go separate, but you just want Charles. Charleston or Beaufort is the correct answer for that one. I'm thinking, let's do Charleston. And then can Arkansas get the right? We are back on the present tense with Sam Stewart, 91.7 FM, at WNJR Washington, and online at WNJR. Dot or folks, we are back here on our second episode of season seven of the present tense. Today we're talking to Jake Pugh and John Peduzzi from the WNJ football team. Before the break, we asked JP and Jake their questions. And the first question is, what city did the first battle of the Civil War take place in? I think we're going to go with Charleston on that one. That's correct. At the Battle of Fort Sumter, when the uh, Union forces, it was Union Fort, were attacked by the Confederate Navy and uh, surrounding areas. Have you been to Charleston before? Yes. That's that's how when you when you said South Carolina. And yeah, I mean, I was gonna because I, I did say I wanted to change the question, not make it a state because I did ask someone what state the Civil War started in, uh, yeah. and I, so I wanted to make it a new trip. I asked someone that last semester, um, but yeah, have you ever been in the fort? Yeah, yeah, I I you took a tour of it. I immediately recognized it in my head. I just forgot what it's called. But yeah, I didn't. I thought like it'd be too hard to ask before, but it was pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Charleston's definitely a very historic city. I don't know. It's Our it's banks made me think of that. <laughs> the show out of bank. Yeah, so it was actually filmed in Charleston. Yeah, that's what made me think of Charleston as soon as I was, yeah. like, I was like, wait a minute, I know you like, you're a big fan of that show. I love it. Really? I am not gonna lie, I've <laughs> never I've never seen it. I <laughs> really Why well, I mean it's a, I've heard it's a good show. I mean so I mean, I I've been to Char I've not I, I have been to Charleston, but I went to Outer Banks with my friend uh, Kyle went to surf mm -hmm. um last winter there and the winter is when the surf is but it's it's amazing, beautiful. I never get a chance to go to OBX. I'm He's probably laughing at me because I would say predominantly more females watch it than males. But I think it's a great show. I mean, I've heard it's just, a, just I just, I'm not into TV shows. And also, like, I'm not going to watch that while I'm, like, homesick for the beach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's cool. Oh, yeah. That totally gets it. So. I don't know. I, was, I got really. I don't think it. it's a girly show. No. Yeah. I mean, I got really into it. And then <laughs> they went down to Charleston in the show. And I'm like, when you ask the question, I'm thinking, wait a minute, I know there's a lot of history in Charleston. I'm thinking, it's got to be that. Yeah, no, um, it's funny because they, they film it there. Um, but the OBX is really cool. So what you can do there is it's actually a national seashore pretty much all the way up and down. You can do bonfires on the beach 
and drive your car on the beach. Yeah, this is, this is a sick place. Yeah, it is. So we did, we did like bonfires every night. It's obviously no lights there, but yeah. in the winter, so you can see the stars. Really, really yeah, cool. One road. Yeah, it's just one road. But actually, funny story, I actually got my first ticket on there. It was like going 20 miles over. But, you know, <laughs> the national, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was a state park trip or not. I don't, it was all kind of a blur, to be honest. But, you know, <laughs> learn from your mistakes. Don't, don't go over the speed limit, kids. Now, now I drive five under. But our second question for tonight is, what famous document did Thomas Jefferson write? Um, what did you say we're going with? Articles of Confederation, is that what you said? Yeah, but it, uh, there's no ads, right? It's not, but oh, let me think of this for a second. It might be the, no, the Declaration of Independence is too easy of an answer. It can't be that. I don't, I don't, yeah, know. I don't know. It's just, you're the history guy. I should know this. I doubt it kill me. I don't know. Just we'll go with that. Articles of Confederation. Yeah. I mean, is that what That's it? incorrect. That's the Declaration of Independence. Oh, oh my god. god! Yes, talk to yourself. Okay, I'm like, I don't even know who wrote the Articles of Confederation because that was you have to think that was before the Constitution, right yeah. after the Civil War. It yeah. doesn't even really get talked about in history class. So I had to look up that. Which was a it was Thomas McKean was the main guy who wrote so we got, that. We got the first name right. John Dickinson. Yeah. First so. Yeah, I mean, to, I, I, yeah, I Thomas mean, Jefferson. Yeah, too, it was too, yeah, easy. It was too easy. He, like, he, I knew it, but I didn't he's uh, he's credited as being the the main author of the Decor. Obviously, he had help from other delegates, but yeah. So that was a uh, trivia for tonight. So thank you for playing. Have you guys ever um, been to Colonial Williamsburg? Shout out my brother. Yes, yes. I have. He's committed to William and Mary. Really? So, yeah, awesome. Good awesome. for him. Um, yeah, I went on eighth grade. Eighth grade. Yeah, it was eighth grade field trip. We took a couple days down there. We went into you know. It's a downtown. We got to go on a couple tours. We got to go into William cool. Mary. It's really beautiful there. And then we stayed at the Great Wolf Lodge that's nearby. And then we went to. Uh, oh, are Gordon. you a fan of Great Wolf Lodge? I love Great Wolf Lodge. We had a fun time. I mean, I, I haven't it's been there since then, so I don't know what it's. Well, they won in Charlotte. Yeah, it's really cool. I stayed. Stuff. I stayed at one. I don't remember where, but it, when I was younger, it was it's sick. like a sick water park. It was, park. So, it was cool. so much fun. Yeah, no, it's a good time. Yeah, we went to Bush Gardens, which is awesome. Oh, really? I absolutely love it. Yeah, I see you guys went to the Colonial. Yeah, place, right? yeah, yeah. We did all. All, like all the educational stuff first. Yeah, it's cool. Colonial Williamsburg. Downtown. That's really cool. Yeah, that it, was, was, it was beautiful. I don't know if this is your guys' coming to or not, but it's a, they have a really cool. This kind of segues into my next thing. Uh, at the Heinz History Center, they have a really cool re envisioning of the American Revolution. So it's like new paintings from all historic battles. So it's kind of like more modern paintings. It's really cool. I'm, I'm really into Revolutionary War history and art as well, which leads me to ask my next question. How was the art in Italy? Because I'm a huge lover of art. I've been for a couple. You, you didn't look at the art at all, Jake? I mean, I don't, I can't say I that. thought it was sick. I mean, like, <laughs> the building? Well, it depends on what. Well, the buildings, like, is there like paintings like, the on the inside and stuff? Yeah, so, like, beautiful. the church is, is where I noticed it. And, like, mm -hmm. we said the whole trip, we were like, this wasn't made by humans. There's no way. I mean, like, obviously it was, but there's no, like, when you look at it in person and you see how big those churches are and all the, per like, literally everything's perfect. Like paintings on the ceiling paintings the sculptures like all that kind of stuff like it's it's perfect like nothing's messed up it's to think like they didn't have any of the technology we have when we stand there and look at it it's like we, it would take 20 years for us to build it now yeah, how long true. did it take back then how much effort like there's no and the the craziest part is like the stones that are like each like each one is probably like this like it's yeah. like three feet wide three feet like mm -hmm. Like they're huge. There's no way you could carry it as a human. That's being. crazy. So it's like, kind of like a shame that like they don't do like we don't see stuff like that anymore. Like newer. Yeah. Like in today's history. I mean, like, nothing looks like that anymore. Yeah. It's no, so beautiful. To I see think that that, that that period is probably my favorite. And like you see a little bit of it. Not to dive too much in art history, but in America, the epic landscape paintings of the West. You can see that Romanesque, like dramatic, like angels and things like that, which I think is really cool. But yeah, no, that's definitely one of my favorite periods of art and I think that's just so cool you all got to sit and one thing I read in the book this summer was that sometimes we get over like I, I imagine like just the beauty of it all was probably a little overwhelming because you probably have e any one of those pieces and just like look, look at it for hours like it's so amazing like so you have all those pieces in one spot it was like a little overwhelming like when you saw those things yeah like it's just the beauty of the, it the uh the Vatican going in inside of that it was probably one it was never mind it was the coolest church I've ever been into really? or building in general and I could have sat there and looked at every single detail in that church for however long but wow. I took probably like 20 pictures inside of there but it was it was so beautiful that's like awesome lots of gold and like 
it was darker, but like, I, you know, I, I don't even know how they did all that, but it was insane. It was so cool. Uh, a, little, a little anecdote from my experience, you talk about sculptures, and it sounds like JP, you're pretty into that. Um, this, you know, bear with me, but there's this artist, and he does Lego sculptures, and like, it sounds like childish, but some of these sculptures are so lifelike. I'll have to show you all pictures, like, they're really like beautiful pieces of art. So I think like, the, the marble sculptures are cool, but sometimes like you just have like modern buildings too, like, you know, in modern architecture, you can find things. Like that just made me think of, um, like that exhibit was really cool. If it ever comes to Pittsburgh, y'all should definitely check it out. It's, it sounds super childish, but I promise, like the things that this guy creates are just beautiful, you know, just these sculptures. It's um, it's really an amazing, or amazing thing. But that, that that's like with that or marble or whatever, like I don't know how people just like sit and look at a piece of material or a piece of canvas and be like, yeah, I'm just gonna paint. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's really cool you guys get to see all that. And what was your favorite memory? You know, obviously I didn't want to talk about the art first, but overall, what was your favorite memory of the Italy trip? There's a couple. Um, yeah, there's <laughs> plenty. <laughs> there's plenty of Ones that are, you know, suitable for this type of radio Absolutely. show. Um, <laughs> I think just getting to spend time with each other in a totally different world. Mm -hmm. um, one specific memory that I'll have forever is the day before, or sorry, the day of the game. So we got to the, we got to, what was it, Senegalia? Was it what it was yeah, called? Yes. Where we stayed at the beach. We stayed at the beach wow, for three, beautiful three beach. nights. It was so beautiful. So we got there the day before we played the game. It was Friday night. We went out on the beach, you know. Coach brought us down. He said we were going to do a workout on the beach. Got us all like, you know, like, oh my gosh, why are we doing a workout <laughs> on the beach? Like, what is wrong with him? And then he pulls us down there. He's like, oh, I'm just kidding. He's like, you know, have a good time, hang out on the beach. You know, it's like 4.30 p.m. We got dinner at seven, you know, just spend the next two and a half hours oh, being, being kids and have fun. Um, but then the day of the game, this is probably my favorite memory. We were supposed to have pregame meal. I can't remember the exact time. I, let's just say we were supposed to have pregame meal at two because it was right around then. I think the game was at like 4.30 or five. I think five was the start of the game. Um, so pregame meal at two, which was like in the hotel we were staying at. And, um, we had a little team meeting in the morning to make sure everybody was up and you know mm -hmm. moving around at like nine so we were off from like nine to two well everyone was of course going to go out to the beach so we got out to the beach and he said you know offense be in there you know be in at one o'clock defense be in at 115 mm -hmm. you know um or whatever it was coaches being ready at 130 so like he wanted everybody ready to go so that we could be served the food at 130 eat be done by two or whatever it was and we're out on the beach his wife, his daughter, like they were playing like pickleball. You know, we were playing beach volleyball, doing whatever, playing basketball because they had like they had all these courts set up. Uh, he's like, he comes over and he's like, "You want to move back to pregame meal?" I was like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "How can we even do it?" He goes, "Well, I'm just telling you, we're not ready to eat." He's like, "We don't even have enough time for the game." So he pushes <laughs> the pregame meal back like two hours because we were having so much fun on the beach, and even he was having that much fun on the beach. And it was just that's something I'll remember forever because he like kind of felt the mood. We were like. Like, yeah, we want to play the game. We're so excited to play the game. But it's like, we're having fun. Like, we're out on the beach. <laughs> he's like, all right, pregame meal is at like 3.30. He's like, but you got, you guys can't be sloppy. You got to be ready to go for the game. He's like, so don't make me regret this decision. He gave us that extra time. That's probably my favorite memory from the trip. And JP? Uh, I think my favorite memory, that the, also the day of the game, was after the game when it was just a big feast. We, fe we, we ate with um, and the Anconia team and like their fan base and their parents are there's a ton of people there and then we have a lot of parents in our fan base who, who came on the trip and the players and we ate with them and then after we ate it just turned into a big party it was just it was just something it was so fun we like we they played music we all got in their tent we were dancing with them and it was just like it was something super cool because like these dudes can't understand you and you can't understand them but like you found this connection and, and partying and music and food and drinks and it was awesome. But uh, that was definitely that one. My second favorite memory was uh, the night or the morning. So we, we went out in, what is it, Bologna? Bologna, yeah. Bologna. And uh, well, let's just say we had a couple of drinks, a lot of us. And uh, <laughs> and, and then the next day we had, we had a wine tour and um, all the all these dudes just were not feeling good. We weren't feeling good at all. But uh, we got to the wine tour. Like, all right, we're just gonna eat and get out of here. We're not gonna try any of this wine. But uh, me and Trevor, we tried some wine. Then we kind of slowly bounced back in the day, and uh, it was good. It was a great time. 
<laughs> no, that's awesome. How do you like the wine? Are you a fan of wine? I do. I do like wine. I like, uh-huh. I like man of class. Yeah, red wine, not dry. Wow. Yeah. He's using the term. See, I'm. Yeah. See, let, let me right over here. He's he's year green behind me, and he's been 21 for like a month. All right, now let me let me uh, let me drop some. I'm taking chemistry of beer right now. I'm taking that next semester. Really, y'all have fun. It's so every Wednesday the, the professor calls it Hump Day, and we do um, beer tasting. So different kind of beer. So last uh, uh, yesterday it was lagers. So like the Coors the Banquet. Uh, beer or whatever it's called, Coors Banquet. And then we did like a couple of Czech and German beers. Mm-hmm. I do not like beer, but it was fun though. You know, I felt like it's like it's got a real hoppy aftertaste, real bitter, but it goes down smooth. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> this uh, dude, Doctor I, he's so into beer. He has his own brewery. That's oh, right. really? That's Actually, what Angela told me. Wow. Yeah, he's like super into. It. He had a shirt on said the beer on the table. <laughs> is, it, is it like a? Is it a good class? Like it's a chemistry. Well, I'll let you know after the first test tomorrow. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's like. So like you do like stuff with like the electron shell and like all that first. Oh. It's like chemistry, but it's like the chemistry of beer. Okay. It's like as it relates to like what chemicals are in the beer. Like because it's a very I didn't realize how science. Like if you age it, I'm not age it. Like if you distill it at this temperature, if you distill it for this long, like lagers are typically lower temperature yeah. for longer, and ales are short and hot. Like the history, like why in California did they you know do lagers because it was more you know neutral temperature in California like. Um, in Germany, they, they couldn't do um, a lot of lagers until they had refrigeration. You know what I mean? And there's different kinds of things and what alcohols are. It's like whiskey is made from like really distilled beer, mm, yeah. and um, like rum is made from uh, sugar cane, and then like wine is made from really, really, really. I'm sorry, uh, certain types of spirits are made from really, really distilled wines. So it's really because it really has impacted the world, like in a lot of countries in Europe, like. People had to drink beer for water. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a clean source of water because the yeast kills the. Yeah. You know, learn about different kinds of yeast. It, you know, fun. I think it's interesting. I mean, it's better than doing like. Uh, I assume like you're you're just wanting to do it just for the requirement, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm not science. Science. Are you taking it too, Jake? Uh, I mean, I won't in the spring. All right, it's gonna be 21. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's be 21. I'll, yeah, I'll probably. Well, I don't know if I'll get to do it because. If I leave early uh, mm-hmm. in the spring in my senior year, and I yeah, I don't know how to work out with playing uh, during the during season because I know Angela had mentioned that he wanted to take it, but he would have to miss practice. On it is a lab, yeah. so you have to do it late. But man, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't really drink a lot, so I'm not gonna lie. I had like I sampled the foot. I had a little bit of a buzz walking over the comps, <laughs> tripping off the sidewalk. So it was it was funny though. There's just all your support and stuff. It's it's pretty cool. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, it, it, you know, if you like history, it is an interesting course. So yeah. that's that's kind of my thoughts on that. Now, a couple more questions. You know, you already um, had just some really deep ones for me, but a couple ones we've had since both y'all have been on the show um, that I'd like to ask for. We just talk a little bit about NFL in our remaining time. Is what is something in your life that you haven't done that you want to do? Win a pack championship. Win a national championship. Uh, All right, there yeah, you that, go. That's a simple answer. Okay, <laughs> I mean that's fine. I mean that's definitely real. Um, that's definitely real. But um, if we're going on the deep talk, I mean I want to start a family. You know, oh, okay. I haven't done it yet. I'm, yeah. I'm really, you know, someday that's something I definitely want to do. Um, but I'm really looking forward to something like that. Sorry, um, we got a little static, but no, sorry, I just okay. fixed some soundboard in the yard with me. Yeah, you know, so I'm building a family at some point in my life. Um, winning a pack championship, winning a national championship, that's real. Um, but yeah, just uh, another thing is, I don't know, maybe maybe see, at, I don't know how you would tell, but like be able, maybe if someone shared it with you, like to know that I've impacted someone's life mm. in a positive way that's or awesome. something like that. Because like, I, I mean, I'm sure maybe I have and I mm. don't know about it, but like, I, I, at some point in my life, I'd like to be able to do something, you know, whether it's donate money or whatever, and, um, you know, someone kind of be like, hey, you know, that really changed my life or something like that. And not being only, you know, a young, younger person, I haven't, I don't know if I've ever done that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm sure you have. I'm yeah. Sure you have. Uh, that's something I definitely would like to, you know, do in my life is just to know for a fact, like, hey, I really made this person's life better or I was able to do something that's well, well, I'll tell you right now, y'all come on here and sharing your knowledge and sharing your stories made my life a lot better. I'm just learning a lot from your stories. Yeah, no worries, man. I think no, that's that's an awesome goal to have though. Um it's super awesome. Um yeah, no, that's really cool. JP, uh what would what have you done? It can be something like Jake said or travel or, you know, something that you usually want to do. Yeah, I 
trying, I was, I've been trying to think, like, what do I want to do? I was trying, I was going to say skydiving, but I've already done that. Um, travel, travel out west. Okay. What, like, what, like, how, like, what kind of west are we talking? Like, so, so I had traveled out west before. What, what with, part? Um, so, I went through, I went to all the national parks. Oh, really? I went to a couple this summer. I went to um, Las Vegas with my dad, and I actually did, I, I enjoyed the hiking more than Vegas itself. Yeah. I liked Red Rock Canyon. I went to Bryce Canyon as well, and then Zion. You've been yeah. to Zion? Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. That's one of those things you can't describe. Yeah, Yosemite, all beautiful. I have many Yosemite. But, oh, really? Mm -hmm. So, I, I think I want to do, I, I can, I, I say I've already done that, but I think I want to do it again because... I think at the age I went, I didn't appreciate it as much as I would right now. Because me and my sister have talked about this. Like, we would love to go on that trip again and do it. And, like, because we took an RV trip and we were out oh, for... Oh, wow, like, dude, that's sick. Yeah, that's a fun time. we were out for, like, 20-something uh, days, maybe, like, a month or something. But it, it was probably... It was way cooler. It would be way cooler if we did that right now. And I think we would appreciate it so much more than we did because we're a lot more mature. And we've been through, like high school and we understand like the history behind all this now oh wow. yeah that's really cool ken burns does a it, it's a little bit of a not the most exciting documentary in the world but i really enjoyed the the history of the national parks the first couple episodes and then um listen man if you were looking for a short trip go up to boone north carolina and do some of that mountain hiking up there it's yeah. really, really beautiful app state obviously is a beautiful, beautiful campus yeah. And, yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff around that campus there. And, you know, lots of cool hikes as well, lots of cool places. So, no, dude, that's an awesome thing to do. And, you know, last question for the night, kind of before we get to some medical talk and wrap up, is a fun one. And I, I've enjoyed people's responses, and I can help if you need help. But uh, I will say, with no context so far, you don't know what this means. But Scott said his answer was 45 and silver. So the question I'm going to ask with that in mind. Watch this. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Would a movie or book about your life be called? Mm. He must have been 45 when his hair turned silver. That, that was exactly <laughs> the example. <laughs> a book about a movie or life be called. Wow. That's a great answer by him. How fast did he come up with that? Uh, well, he was like, my hair started turning like white when it was 42 and it was 45. He's like, I love my job, but he's I, like, most people think I'm more than I am because I'm so fair. I've heard some real good answers uh, uh, over the years here. Uh, say the writing favorite right now would have to be uh, someone said uninvited guest because they wow. thought they were underrated. That was good. I was like, wow, I'd watch that. Uh, sky from our polo team. She was like uh, the uh, she's like the color of the sky. Oh yeah, I was like, that's deep too. So I mean, um, I mean, I don't know. They're like cheesy. They got cheesy. They got cheesy. It's all right. There's certain books that are cheesy. I mean, like some, some as simple as like Underdog or something like that. Okay. Because yeah. I mean, I you know, I, I was able to play for a, a great team in high school and you know another great team now. But like, I, I've always been like the smallest guy. You know, like as, as like a five foot nine quarterback. You know, I feel like the perfect example is like Bryce Young in the yeah. going to the NFL now. Like for the Panthers. Yeah, she played at Alabama. Like mm -hmm. people. People counted him out because of his right. size. People have counted me out because of my size. You know, I didn't get a, you know some looks to play college sports because of my size. Um, you know, I got discredited because of my size before. Not that like anything like hurt me, and I was like, oh, I can't do something because of it. But maybe you know something just like that, and maybe just like an underdog mentality or something like that. You know, I think that'd be a cool name for it. That's that's good. I think I can make it a little better. Underdog, under center. Oh. Pretty good. Hey, yeah. you better give me royalties on that. That documentary comes All right. So, yeah. So, when Netflix comes calling. <laughs> yeah, for the WJ. Hey, Netflix, if you're listening right now, we need a documentary. On our dog under center. JP, what's uh, you got? I, I have no idea. The only thing I can think of is like how. Okay, but I'm going to explain this before I tell you the actual title. I'm from the South, but like I have so many connections from up here, from the North. It'd be called. The, the Northern Southern Boy. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, that's the only thing I can think I like of. It. I, couldn't, I couldn't really. Just trying to think it sounds like a Mark Twain novel. Yeah. Cabana Boy. Cabana Boy. Yeah, I, I The Northern Cabana Boy. What about, what about this? Palm trees and TDs. 
Like where? Where? Yeah. Where? Palm trees. Well, palmetto trees, I guess. Nice. Same thing. Yeah. I, I saw more in the hat. I was like, it's funny, my mom, because a lot of people ask us, like, or me, uh, when I'm up there, like, why does North Carolina come up here? And she's like, she makes a kid on the WJ football team who left Hilton Head to go to Washington, PA. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's, I don't know why he's here, but, you know, I'm here. So that's uh, why I ended up meeting you. But, guys, thank you for those answers. That's so awesome. And, you know, we're not going to dive too, too much into the NFL tonight, but just a general question I wanted to ask y'all. What's the division that you're really looking forward to watching this year? I'm going to be biased and say the NFC North. I, Let's get into it. I was going to say the AFC North. Yeah, I mean, as a Steeler fan, absolutely, because, you know, people, everyone wants to – Count out the Steelers because of the talent that they do. Vegas players. has the lowest odds to win the division. Actually, did you know that? They're, they're yeah. It's, it's a the Vegas. According to Vegas, it's um, the, what is the AFC West? No, no. Oh, Ve- he says S- Vegas Steelers. It's given the Steelers. Oh, oh, it's about like the odds. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so Vegas has given them. Yeah. Like, gotcha. The gotcha. worst gotcha. favorite ever. Had. Oh, wow. That's yeah. So, and the Browns have them. They have the best Vegas. odds to win it. No. Best odds to. Win. Be oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, the, I a lot of injuries are really excited, though. You know what I mean? I, you got I'm, better I'm, offensive line. I mean, I think Kenny Pickett's in their center year. Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season. I will say, you know, Lamar Jackson's new passing offense. I'm, I'm not too sure about that because to me, he'll always be a runner first, just personally. And like, he's in a couple of years, he's gonna pass Michael Vick. He's only about 2,000 rushing yards behind Michael Vick, and Michael Vick played 13 seasons. Lamar has played four. You know what I mean? So it's it's like here's the thing. It, you know, it, I don't know if that offense will work up for them. You know, uh, here's the thing about the Browns. I just want to add this in your new offensive coordinator, Jim Swartz, personally, and Jake, you probably, do, do, you, do you have faith in Deshaun Watson? I don't, I don't feel like he's going to have a great year. That's just my opinion. Um, I don't know. I, I think the Browns are always going to be the Browns. Browns. That's what, that's what my barber said today. I said, my barber said the Browns. The Browns are going to be the They have, like, if you look at their team on paper, and I saw it the other day, their offensive payroll compared to everybody else. Is like there's like sixty million dollars higher just on offense than anybody else in the league. I mean, they but it's not excuse to be bad. Browns fans are always like, "This is the year." So yeah, it's like, can it, we be like, "This is the year"? This year, it's, no. it but it's like, never the year. Yeah, it's never the year. They have so much beef with Pittsburgh. It's like I don't have any beef with you because you're just never good. Yeah, and, you know the so I'll say that the only thing I'll say about the rest about the division is Joe Burrow. I mean, to me, the Bengals are still the favorite. Joe Burrow, if he's healthy, obviously he should be ready to go week one with that calf strain. But, but the way I heard it is like so. I, I, I heard from someone, a couple of people, that there's a mutual respect, kind of, with uh, Steelers and the Bengals and the Steelers and the Ravens, but it's just the Browns. There's just, like, a little respect for the Browns. I, I don't know about anyone else. The Bengals are probably my second most disliked team in all of sports. All right. So, the Ravens, though, I do I – do, I respect the Ravens. That's too like hard hitting franchise, and they when especially that Ray Lewis yeah. and the Steelers. Yeah, like I have no hatred towards the Ravens whatsoever. I, I mean, I of course I don't cheer for them. I don't like them, but I'll say the big rivalry. But like, there's that. I think there's that respect there. There's not yeah. there with Cleveland. Yeah. For some people, I'm sure the Bengals. The, the, the respect is definitely there for the for Baltimore and them. But yeah, I just don't like the Bengals. Wow. In case you were wondering, what number one was it was the Rangers, New York Rangers. But yeah. Uh, I thought you were going to say the Texas Rangers. Uh, <laughs> he's way more of a Steelers fan than I am. I'm like when people say that I'm a Yinzer, it's because of the Pirates, not because of. And it's tough to be a Yinzer for the. Pirates. I mean, they start off hot. I went to a, you know, it's just it's, it's little things in baseball, man. And you know, it's I, I thought with not being in a great division this year, like maybe, but whew, it's rough. They're they're rough, but I, hey, the, they're going to be good next year. I'm. I'm willing to bet they Sounds win. Sounds like a true answer. <laughs> I'm willing to bet they win 80 games next year. I'm not saying anything about postseason because I don't know what other teams will be like, but I bet they win 80 games. Bro, I'll tell you who's legit and has a young core is the Orioles, bro. The I think Orioles it's Orioles and Braves World Series called them. What, this year? Yeah, I'm not watching that. Dude, Acuna, <laughs> dude, that's a good all time season. You know what I mean? 60 30. I like Dylan Cruz, so the Reds is fun to watch. Yeah, he is fun to watch. I mean, it, it's going to be a, the, the baseball's in a good spot right now. I like the pitch clock rule personally. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But back to football. So I, I, I think that was a good discussion about the North. The other divisions that I want to get your takes on that seemed interesting to me AFC East. Aaron Rodgers. Love him. Playoffs or not? Yes. Yeah. Playoffs? Yeah. I th- I is it the ceiling? Good. Super Bowl this year? Uh, uh, Depends on the health of the people around them. I agree. I mean, so their offensive line was typically 
you know, at some points kind of weak last year, I'd say on the weaker side. He's 39 years old. We know that obviously with Tom Brady, he had a weak offensive line last year. Like, if you're at order quick, you need to protect them. You do need to protect them. Because the thing is, you, just as you get older, it's just science that if you get hit a certain amount of times as you age, you actually start to get a little more jumpy in the pocket. Yeah. That's for MMA I, fighters actually to study on it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I believe it. Um, and you can see with Tom Brady as he, you know, he used to stand in there. Not that any refs ever let him get hit because they protected him. Yeah, uh, maybe. But um, no, that's just I don't like Tom Brady. But I, How, but he is the he's the goat. Isn't he's it? Vincent. What you said about with Pittsburgh fans are respecting Baltimore. Like I respect him. I don't. Okay. I don't like. Him. I would never cheer for him when he was playing. But I respected him. Like he was. He was great, you know, and it was so obvious how great he was at winning. Even even if he wasn't the most talented quarterback, he was great at winning, which means more than anything else because he's won more than other people have. Um, but I like, I mean, Rodgers is my guy, and I'm obviously biased because my uncle got to work with him when he was in Green Bay, and now, you know, my uncle. Did you listen to him on Joe Rogan? I did for a interesting little Interesting guy. Yeah. He, it was a little um, hard to find. I mean, he got to the ayahuasca yeah, and all that stuff. He's an interesting guy about the psychedelics. He is. He's, I mean, he's very interesting. He's a, <laughs> he is one, like... He gets a bad rap in the media, but he does it to himself a little bit because he likes to play with the media. Mm-hmm. And he likes to, you know, have he's a smart guy. He's brilliant, and he is genuinely one of the greatest human beings. Like I got to sit down and talk with him for really, a while. yeah, what a great story. Yeah, and so he's he's genuinely a great guy. And something I'll share about him: um, me and my cousin Tyler got to meet him after their uh, what would have been two seasons ago now when they were in, in Green Bay um, after they beat the Vikings in the regular season to clinch the number one seed. And, you know, it was like 1 a.m. We were out in the parking lot still, and it's negative four degrees outside. Wow. And we're still out in the parking lot. All the coaches were hanging out with them. You know, they're they're smoking their victory cigars, and they're standing out there. They just clenched a one seat, so they're having a good time. Fans are still waiting outside the parking lot where the coaches and players stand for Rodgers to come out because he everyone had left besides the coaches. All the players were gone. Mm-hmm. At 1, like, 15 in the morning, we went to go inside because I had to go to the bathroom, and it was cold, so I wanted to warm up a little bit. He's just leaving the building. Fans are still waiting for him. Wow. And when we went inside, he knew about WJ. What? And Dude. my cousin Tyler, who played at Seton Hill, he knew about Seton Hill. And he credited it to because he played with a guy named John Kuhn, who was a fullback that went to uh, Kutztown University, and, which is in the PSAC, which is the same conference that Seton Hill's in. So that's how he knew about the PSAC. And then when I mentioned WJ, he was like, oh, yeah, you're right there in Washington, PA, right? What? And I was like, Dude, what a cool story. I was like, wow. I mean, like, it just shows how brilliant it is. And he, re- like, he really does care about the people he meets. Like, yeah, he, that's something. And like you said earlier, those guys are humans, too. Like, that was a cool moment because it's like, you know, I see this guy on TV all the time. He's messing with people with the media saying, you know. But, like, when it comes down to, like, he, he's, about, like he's a great guy. Uh, wow. Thank you for sharing that story. That's awesome. And. I mean, the only other point, I mean, the Dolphins almost beat their Bills last year without two. I think they have one of the best receiving cores in the league. Pats aren't supposed to be great, but, you know, they have Belichick and the uh, the Bills. You know, they, I feel like their window's closing, but who do y'all see taking this division? Jets. Yeah, probably. I got the Bills. I got the Bills. No. The Bills are falling hard. They are, I think but they, are. they lost. But <laughs> Tremaine Edmonds losing him, he's not, not a bear. I'm so excited to watch him as a bear. Losing him is going to hurt their defense. He is one of the best players, even if he even if he's not that great, like fundamentally. You know, he's six yeah. foot seven, two hundred. I might. Miles. I don't know, but here's the thing: is like you said, like, I feel like it could be the, but also the Dolphins. I do really like the Dolphins. Like, I'm not too a believer. So really, wow. Yeah. Well, I don't. Okay. I believe in the. I like. I don't. I don't think. Uh, for some reason, like he said, I'm not a big believer in it, but mm-hmm. I think their team in it as a whole is pretty good. They definitely have a talented rock. And I don't, I don't even have a reason to not believe in him. It's just one of those things where, like, when I watch him play. But he, he was an underrated guy, wasn't he? Absolutely. He's an underdog yeah. story. Yeah. So, and then the last uh, kind of division here, we'll talk about MVP and then we'll wrap up. We're getting close to time here. Um, AFC West. We'll start with the Chiefs, seven straight division titles. I just saw a really interesting uh, video, I think it was a Green Light podcast, it's called. Where Andrew was talking about how he got to play from a janitor. Did you guys see this clip? I'll have to send you guys. So a janitor, when he worked for the Packers, actually drew up a play and he used it in the game. Mm-hmm. He had the janitor was like, "I have a play, I have a play, I have a play." Got the play, scored a touchdown with the Packers. Wow! So pretty cool story there that I saw today. I wanted to add that in. Um, you know, I, I feel like new offensive coordinator from you know the the Chargers kind of fell apart at the end of last year. I like the new offensive coordinator move. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Raiders, I don't think they're gonna be good. Broncos, Russell Wilson, I want to go to my quarterback in the room here. 16 TDs and 10, 11, 16 TDs, 11 INTs. Sean Payton takes over. Do the Broncos have a chance of winning this division this year? 
Nope. No way. <laughs> Chiefs are too good. The Chiefs are too. Uh, that's what and, 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 you know, the Broncos might be better. Uh, coach Hackett's my guy. That's, you know, he was their head coach last year, and that kind of didn't work out for him. Rough year for the Broncos. Yeah, I, I love Coach Hackett. He's, he's one of the greatest dudes ever. Um, but... I think I don't know. Sean Payton might be overhyped a little bit, you know. He, might be one of those situations where it's it doesn't just fit. Like he had he was, Drew Brees, like he was. Yeah. And it was, Russell Wilson's not a bad quarterback. No, though. but I think Russell Wilson was a great quarterback when he could extend plays, and I don't know if he can do that anymore. Yeah, we'll see. They, have, they don't have a bad roster, right? They don't. No, they don't. But I just think that Sean Payton was so great in that. Yeah. You know, he was so great at knowing what Drew Brees was good at, and you know, Drew Brees found the guy like that. That was just a perfect system. Those guys work so well together. And now it's like he was forced away from it, and now he's kind of coming back into it real quick. And he already got a little bit on his plate, you know, talking a mess on some other guys. I don't know if you saw that or not. No, I didn't see that. He he basically, when he came in, he said that everything the Broncos did last year is thrown out the window. He said it was the worst. He said he came, he sat down and said everything they did last year, everything that I've been told from what they've done, that is the worst ideas and worst coaching display I've ever seen. In well, I don't know. Urban Meyer was pretty bad. So. Yeah, exactly. So I, like, <laughs> he came in and right away started saying all these things. So now it's kind of like... Saving back it up? Yeah. So my prediction for MVP this year, this is the last question for going to quote of the day. 15 out of the last 16 have gone to QBs, and only one in that time period has been less than a record 12 wins. You take that for me, you take the quarterbacks to qualify that. I got Pat Mahomes saying the MVP home this year. Like, I'm a big Pat Mahomes guy. That's my thoughts. Who you guys got for MVP before we go to the quote of the day here? I mean... I don't like the Eagles. I should say I hate them. I don't like. Uh oh, uh oh. Clip it, send the coach. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might have to go with uh, Jalen Hurts. Okay, that's a good pick. I didn't, I didn't know that sad about the wins. Um, you said everyone except for one has had more than twelve. Yeah, games. I tried to find who was. I, I, I had a hard time finding who that was. I have to, I have to get back to y'all on that. That's impressive because there's no. I mean. I want to say Justin Fields just because I'm biased. I mean, do you think they'll get 12 wins, though? That's that's what I'm worried about. If you go with the trends, like, it's not impossible. Yeah, it's not impossible. I mean, I don't know. He's, he's such a good player. My heart wants to say Justin Fields after watching him all summer long. So you get the Bears for the division and the... Well, I don't think they'll win the division. Uh, I think okay. the Lions will win it. Mm. But I think the Bears finish 8-9 and nine and make the playoffs. Uh, and... It's All I'm big. saying, Coach Sirianni, is the Eagles better get that by because if the Bears go to Philly, <laughs> the Bears can run the ball just as well as the Eagles can run the ball. So it'll be a good game. All right. I'm just kidding. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. It's been really fun. And I'm going to take us home with our quarter of the day tonight. Unless you guys brought anything new for me. No? You All right. All right. Things. So this is from Martin Luther King, and it is a quote that's been said on the show before, but I want, I've never used it on the show, but I want to. Um, bring it from my perspective here to talk about it. Ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. So I think for me, uh, sports is is just a, a a walking challenge. It's a walking, talking anything anyone you encounter in sports is going to challenge you, whether it be the opponent, um, your coaches, and it's all opportunity to grow. And it's an opportunity to see who you are as a person. I think, you know, football is so emotional and, you know, you really see people step up and, you know, I know you guys are going to do a great job this year and I'm looking forward to all WNJ athletics and, you know, for me, it's my last year of sports. I guess I'm saying this because I just love the challenge that sports gives you, trying to maintain a level head and revealing who you are as a person. I think that's one of the things I love about sports and I love watching WNJ sports. It's my last year here and I'm really excited to get to experience one more President's football season. So good luck to y'all this Saturday. And good luck the rest of the season as you guys try to take home that pack championship this year. So, Absolutely. once again, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for thank you very much for having us. It's awesome. been a great time. It's been a great time for me as well. All right, everyone, we'll be back next Tuesday and Thursday, week two of the President's. We're going to preview a couple new sports that we haven't done so far this season. But until then, everyone have a great night. We're going to live in the President's.